Hagara thinks because she's a three-phase fight that we're supposed to be scared of her. We're on a mission to stop Deathwing, and if she's under the impression that a little lightning and ice is going to slow us down, obviously nobody told her about Ascendant Council. Psh, there were like four of them. Hagara is the fourth boss in Dragon Soul and is a three phase repeating encounter. Each phase is quite unique and requires a very different strategy than the others. At the time of our testing, Hagara had around 90 million HP and spawned a few adds throughout the encounter. Frozen binding crystals with around 1 million HP each and bound lightning elementals. In addition, the boss will occasionally encase several raid members in blocks of ice that must be AoE'd down. You'll want to bring two tanks six healers, and a balanced DPS makeup. We'll remind you that this video and strategy guide were created during the PTR testing, and if the fight changes significantly when it goes live, we will create a new guide to reflect this. Thank you. During Phase 1, the first spell you'll notice is Hagara's Focus Assault. She will swing wildly at her primary target, dealing increased melee damage for a short duration. Throughout this phase, she will also attack random single targets with Shattered Ice an attack that deals high frost damage and reduces the target's movement speed for a short duration. This effect can be dispelled. Occasionally, she will summon multiple crystals of ice that fixate a random player near the boss and assault them with ice lance. This ice lance will deal moderate frost damage to the targeted player and splash to all nearby players. It will also lower the attack speed of all targets. Finally, during each phase one after the first, Hagara will summon ice tombs. These entrap multiple players in a block of ice that must be broken by other players. After a preset amount of time, Hagara will begin Phase 2. There are two options for Phase 2, each with a completely different set of spells. The boss may choose to enter the Lightning Phase or the Ice Phase. We'll cover the Ice Phase first. Hagara begins the phase by encasing the middle of the platform in the storm of water and ice. This protects her against all attacks and causes any player inside of it to begin drowning lowering their movement speed and losing a percentage of their health every second. She will then spawn four binding crystals around the platform that must be killed to end the phase. Shortly into the phase, the boss will spawn four ice waves. These lines extend outward from the boss, reaching to the end of the platform. They rotate around the platform and act as cutter beams, destroying any player caught in their path. While all of this is occurring, icicles will fall from the sky. These deal high frost damage to any player they hit, as well as knock them back. Once all four binding crystals have been destroyed, phase one will repeat. Hagara's lightning phase is just as threatening. She will begin by channeling a lightning storm that electrocutes all players on the platform. During this time, she will be invulnerable due to her protective water shield. Multiple crystal conductors will spawn around the platform and players will need to overload them to end the phase. In addition, two bound lightning elementals will spawn that must be DPS down. Killing an elemental will cause it to overload a nearby conductor and the conductor will then electrocute nearby players. Electrocuted players can overload conductors by walking near them while being electrocuted. Some of this can sound quite confusing. Let's break it down in the strategy section. Positioning in phase 1 isn't too important. Make sure to assign dedicated tank healers who must keep the tank alive throughout focus assault. It may be best to use tank cooldowns during this to ease the healing or even to kite the boss using ranged taunts. Raid healers will need to focus on keeping players alive who are focused with ice lands. This shouldn't be too challenging, but to help out, ranged players can essentially tank the ice lands by standing in its way. Shattered ice can prove to be a fatal combo if it lines up with ice lands, so keep players top. We aren't sure if this will be changed, but as of testing, the ice blocks did not do splash damage. Because of this, players targeted with Ice Tomb, indicated by a blue arrow above their head, stacked in a predetermined spot to make them easier to AoE down. It is important to remember that the Ice Tombs do break line of sight, so make sure not to take the boss near them. Survive this phase and maximize damage on the boss since she will be immune during other phases. After a short while, the next phase will begin. The Ice Phase is simple enough in theory. Run around the outside of the platform, avoiding falling icicles, staying ahead of the ice wave, and DPSing down the binding crystals. In practice though, this can be somewhat tricky. Begin the phase by running to the outside of the platform. You'll want to stay as close to Hagar's water bubble as possible, 
as this will decrease the distance your raid must run to stay ahead. Trying to stay ahead of the ice wave by running around the very edge of the platform will prove fatal. This will become more difficult as the group is forced to dodge the falling icicles. Strafing in and out on the platform will cause the group to lose time staying ahead of the ice wall. Don't hesitate to use movement speed spells or gap closers like Sprint or Intercept to stay ahead. Keep in mind as well that the raid must DPS down the four binding crystals in order to end the phase. In order to most efficiently do this, you'll want to do one of two possible things. Have the whole raid group go to one crystal at the start of the phase and work their way around the platform together, or split the raid into two groups and have them both circle, working down crystals evenly. Which strategy your raid goes with would depend on overall DPS, but both are viable if done correctly. The lightning phase is more complex still. For starters, the raid damage will go way up as players are caught inside Hagara's storm. Tanks will need to pick up the elementals that spawn and drag them toward a conductor to be killed. Once it does, it will overload the conductor. This causes the conductor to electrocute nearby players and essentially grant them a chain lightning effect. The conductor electrocutes nearby players and these players electrocute nearby players. This effect will go up until it is either outranged or the initial charge drops. Your raid will need to use this effect to chain lightning around to the other conductors. Once all conductors have been overloaded in this way, Hagara will become stunned, take increased damage for a short duration, and the next phase 1 will begin. This fight is all about execution. Each phase and section of the encounter must be handled differently and the raid will need to become familiar with all of the mechanics before succeeding. Assignments will help each phase run smoothly, so don't hesitate to give those out. If you find this guide helpful or informative, remember to bookmark us at learntoraid.com, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Justin TV and Twitter. As always, we hope this guide was helpful and we'll see you at the next boss. I wasn't feeling so good. I just didn't feel like playing anymore. So I went home and I got all comfy and cozy and all scrunched up in front of my phonograph. And I sat there and I closed my eyes and listened to all this music.